Spreads are where the money is at. You most likely heard options traders, people who have time in the market, time with derivatives, saying that spreads are a way to make a lot of money. But you're new. What is an option spread? Well, this is what we're going to be talking about in today's video. So welcome back to our education series. If you haven't seen the beginner's guide for crypto options, the link's gonna be up here in the card. We're gonna be doing a playlist with all the educational videos regarding uh, crypto options or just options in general. So stay tuned for this playlist. But today's topic will be about spreads. I've talked about spreads and I've shown spreads here on the channel with previous videos. I personally enjoy the flexibility and the returns spreads give you, but you need to understand what they are in order to understand how to profit from those. So what is a spread? A spread option is nothing more than an option that derives its value from the difference in price or the spread between two other options. So in simpler terms, spread option is a group. So imagine a box inside this box, there are two other options. There is an option being sold and an option being bought. What is the total price of the box? Well, it is the difference between the sold and the bought part. So you're going to add those together and that value that you get is the value of the spread option itself. So inside this option contract, there are two fluctuating values. There is the sold option and the bought option, and they always change prices. The prices are live, so they always keep updating. And this makes the PL of the whole strategy of the whole box, the, the spread itself, the spread strategy, fluctuate as well, because as the numbers for the underlying options, uh, the bought and the sold, keep updating, the overall value of the spread will change as well. So if you are like me, an editor, um, an example that I like to give is on Premiere when you have a nested sequence and inside the nested sequence, you can have a lot of different images or videos inside the sequence. But when you're looking at a timeline, you just see a single nested sequence. Well, a little bit technical here. If you are an editor or if you know a little bit about editing, um, this example most likely made it clear for you. So why would someone use a spread? Well, because the spread is much cheaper uh, and also sometimes more profitable than to go with vanilla options. But if you look at the spread as a whole, as a single contract, it works just as a vanilla. You're going to have one PL, one maximum profit, and one maximum loss, just as a vanilla option. And the funny thing um, is that with these underlying assets, so the options that you're buying and selling inside the spread, you can go crazy. You can go same date or you can go different dates. That's a calendar spread, for example. Um, you can go same date, different expiration. You can go same date, wide expiration. You can go same expiration, super wide strikes, super close strikes, debit spreads, credit spreads. There's a whole lot that you can do, but we're gonna be talking about mainly four uh, strategies that you can do with spreads. So we're gonna cover call spreads and puts spreads. But as I said, because they're very modular, you can go crazy with uh, what you can do with these uh, vanilla options put together inside a spread. So spreads can take advantage of any sorts of market condition. So it can be a low volatility environment. It can be an up or down movement, um, sideways market, a high IV situation, low IV situation, whatever you think about spreads can uh, be modular enough to take advantage of whatever event or whatever movement is happening or whatever condition the market is in. So as I said, we're going to focus on four spreads. We have call spreads and put spreads. Each of these strategies, the call spreads and the put spreads have two uh, ways of doing it. So let's start with the bull call spread. What is the bull call spread? Well, you will have a lot of names for these uh, strategies. Uh, the bull call spread is also known as a debit call spread, uh, long call spread, whatever it is. But what you need to know, it is a bullish strategy and it has two legs. And what it does, it buys one call option and it sells a call option, same expiration date, but at a higher strike price. So this gives you a range of profit. You have a defined maximum loss and a defined maximum uh, profit, but you have to pay to open the position. This is why you hear the term uh, called debit spread, because you pay a fee upfront to uh, profit when you close the position. So this is pretty much a way for you to be bullish on the underlying asset, but with a discount. So instead of you uh, buying the underlying asset or instead you're just buying a call, you're gonna pay cheaper than just buying a call because again, you're selling one, so you're collecting money back, but you're gonna be uh, making less maximum profit than just buying a call. So your profit will be capped by the strike that you sold, so the strike above. 
what does that mean? It means that the, if the underlying asset goes above that strike, it can go to the moon, but you already reached maximum profit because you sold an option there. So just to conclude, you pay a net cost to open this position. But now let's go to the bear credit spread. This is a bearish strategy instead of a bullish strategy. It is still just with calls, but now you're selling a higher strike call and you're buying a call at a lower strike. So looking at a PL chart, you're making the mirrored, so the inverse version of what you just did for the first one that we just saw. Why would you do this? You do this if you are bearish, you, if you believe the underlying asset will go down from the current price. This is just like selling options, but you limit your downside. Of course, when you're limiting your downside, you're also limiting the upside as well. So you're going to have a protection layer, but you're going to be making a little bit less than if you're just selling an option, selling a vanilla option. But what does it do? Well, this is a net premium option. So you're actually collecting cash when you open the position. It is not a debit spread, it is a credit spread. So this is why this is also called a credit call spread or a call credit spread or a short call spread. Because again, you're opening position collecting premium because since you sold a higher strike, the premium is gonna be higher than the premium that you're buying back. So you're, if you're selling 100 and buying back 20, you still have 80 of credit. So this is why it is a net credit upfront. Now let's go for put spreads. Again, with put spreads, we have two scenarios, a bearish and a bullish. This is just to demystify that everything uh, put related is bearish and everything call related is bullish. Now, as you can see, you can also be bearish with calls and you can also be bullish with puts, which brings us to the bear put spread. The bear put spread, by looking at a chart of a PL, it is similar to the bear call spread. It is bearish as well, but here you pay a net cost to open. You're not going to get credit up front. You're going to have to pay out of pocket to open this position. And what it does, it sells a put at a higher price and it buys a put on a lower price. And since lower price for puts are more expensive, you're going to be um, deploying capital to open this position. If it was the opposite, lower price would be cheaper. But because we are with puts, lower prices usually are more expensive than higher strike prices. So this is why you uh, pay to open the position. And then we have bull put spreads. They're also called put credit spreads because just like the bear call spread, we have the bull put spread. You collect a net premium when opening the position. You buy a put option at a lower strike price and you sell a put option at a higher strike price. So that creates a net premium for you. And what happens is that you profit if the underlying asset goes up in price but you are also protected if it goes down dramatically because you created that limit from the lower strike that you bought. But this sounds too complicated for me, Everton. How can I do that without having to understand and knowing how to chase these things and knowing how to pick these strikes and whatever? And how can I trade these spreads um, without having to know strike prices, expiration dates, uh, having to choose a strike to sell, a strike to buy, whatever, all these shenanigans happening here. Well, this is what Betopix is offering. So if you go to the income products tab on Betopix, this is what we offer. We simplified spreads for you. What you see here is a credit spread. So you have a put and a call credit spread. So how do you know which is a call and which is a put spread? Well, as we said before, the call credit spread is bearish. It wants the underlying asset to go down. So these in red saying below 55, below 60, below 28K, they are call credit spreads because they are bearish. If you are bullish, they are uh, put credit spreads because they are bullish, as we saw before in the examples. So it is pretty easy for you to choose because the green ones are put credit spreads. They want the underlying asset to go up and the red ones are call credit spreads. They want the underlying asset to go down in price. So now that you have that figure out, which one should you choose? Well, the rule is simple. You have right here the expiration date, um, which is uh, the 26th on this line, uh, June 28th on this line, and then we have September 27th here and March 2025 for next year even um, at the bottom. So once you pick your expiration date, you can decide which way you think the market will go. So right now we have huge, huge numbers all the way around. This morning we had more strikes. We had a 65,000 uh, strike, for example, but you can decide which way. Of course, the higher the return, the riskier it is because the POP, the probability of profit goes down, uh, the higher the return it is. So a rule of thumb would be if you're uh, 
trying to keep it low, you know, no, no much, not much risk. You can look at the risk appetite here where it says medium, and you can also look at the, the maximum profit that you can make. Because again, the lower the maximum profit, the most probability of profit you have. This is why we do the weekend strategy, for example, because there's low volatility and you can make passive income out of recurring winning trades, even if they are very little. So 4%, 2%, we made 26% uh, last week in a strategy. So these numbers right here are just for speculating purposes. So if you believe Bitcoin will go up to that price, above that price or below this price, this is for speculation, but most likely during other days, if you refresh the topics here, you go to this page, you will see lower maximum profits for you will see 4%, 6%, 8%. These have higher chances of going in your favor. So you can use that strategy if you want to make passive income or if you want to make synthetic dividends sort of like. So again, this comes up to how do you think or where do you think the underlying asset will be at expiration time? So let's take a look actually at Ethereum. We now have a few Ethereum options here. Um, and I do believe that Ethereum by next year will be way above 5,000, but I'm not sure it will be above 8,000. But because of that, uh, let's open actually this one right here, the March 28th, 2025. So next year, so almost a full year ahead uh, of current date. Um, let's open this because I believe we will be above 5,000. So I will make 3x the amount of money that I put in. So let's put in. So it says right here that if I put $10, I will make $32. Let's actually put a full contract. It will mean that if I put $100, I will make $320. Um, so let's actually go with five. It means that if Ethereum is above 5K by the expiration date, I will make $1,600. So now uh, it just updated. As you can see, uh, it's 505 to uh, 1595, which is still good in my uh, books. So let's open this position. I can show you how easy it is. See, your position is open and you can check it down. So my position is open. You can see it right here, March 2025, above 5,000. And I have opened this put credit spread. So you can see how simple this was. Of course, with the new UI, it will come a lot more strikes. It will come the ability for you to choose to get a more pro version of this. You can choose. But if you want to keep things simple, this is where the income products come in because we offer these recurring uh, simplified versions of spreads. So you can just get in to the ones that you believe will fit your strategy most. Of course, we have to remind you that this is all a risk that you're taking. And the same way you can win, you can lose if you're speculating for these huge returns that you saw right here in the example. But if you want to check it out, the link for the topics is the first link in the description. So make sure to click it and check it out. You can speculate and try to make a lot of money with these spreads. Of course, thank you. I hope you understood what a spread is and I hope you're able to profit from this. If you are, please let us know in the comments down below if you've done any profitable trades recently. And if you haven't done yet, don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on the notifications so you don't miss when we post videos here on the channel. Thank you so much and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.